GTA Online released a new business in the game called the Selvage Yard, and this is going to be my mega guide so you guys can stay on top of your business and maximize your profits. So in this video, we're going to go over every single mission, as well as we're going to go over how to buy it, what upgrades to get, also some mistakes I made along the way, and some things you might want to consider. Before we get into that, please do drop a like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the first step. So the first step is buying the business. If you already purchased the business, you guys can skip this step, but you might want to listen to some of the things I have to say about the upgrades. For this, I bought the most expensive one to get an idea of the location and how valuable it is. So I got the La Peruta location and there's all these other locations up in Polito Bay area and of course Sandy Shores. I do not recommend the northern ones, especially Sandy Shores. As of right now, I think that's a complete race. If I were to pick between two, I'd probably get Strawberry or the La Peruta location. I think those two locations offer the most value for the missions I've completed thus far. Tint is obviously preference and completely not necessary, but I went ahead and got the dark gray. Get trade rates. Now what this does is it's going to provide a discount when you make claims with Morris Mutual. So bringing a luxury vehicle down from 20,000 to 10,000. Now I know this doesn't seem like much, but let me tell you, it's going to save you thousands and thousands of dollars. At $450,000 with someone with money, definitely worth the upgrade in my opinion, as it is a long-term investment. If you're just beginning out and don't have extra cash, of course, you guys can go ahead and skip this. Now, tow truck, this is actually a key part of the business. So you are going to need to get a tow truck. The cost between the two tow trucks is going to be 650,000 versus 1.1 million. So I went ahead and got the more expensive one. I do not believe there's any difference when it comes to the missions or anything like that. It's just cosmetic most likely, but I did go ahead and get the most expensive option. And that's what I'd recommend most players do because at this point, everybody has money. So for our next upgrade, we have the wall safe. This is going to accumulate passive income for your business. So you're gonna probably wanna get this as well. It's $750,000, but over time it will pay itself up just like all the other wall safes in the game. And last but not least, we have the staff. Now for our staff, we are going to pay $625,000 at full price. And what this will do is it will increase the speed at which they salvage parts from the vehicles. And trust me, you're gonna want this as well. If you're going to pick the upgrades in order, I'm going to tell you guys to go ahead and get the tow truck as your first pick. Then I'd most likely get the staff and then the wall safe. And then of course the trade rates and tint in that order, in my opinion, based on what I've experienced so far. This is gonna set me back just short of $5.7 million for this business. Accruing this money back over time is going to be a little bit difficult. I think I'll get my money back out of this business over the next few weeks, but you'll see the problem with this business rather quickly. So quickly going over the salvage yard business, we have our snacks in the top part of the office along with the safe that is hidden behind this picture. We can also change our outfit here. We can check an AFK probably on the security cameras and as well as we have a gas canister with a health pack and of course we have wrenches everywhere. We also have a really terrible TV setup and we have a vending machine so we can top up our health with sodas as well. And that kind of wraps up all of the utility that is available with the scrapyard business. As soon as you're done purchasing it, you're going to get a call put through a really cool cutscene, and then you'll be asked to go ahead and use this computer. You're going to have to register as a CEO or a motorcycle club president to use the computer. Once you've done that, you're going to see three options for this week. Now we'll have the BF Weevil for our, this week, the Hellfire Gauntlet and the new Garotti Turismo Omagio. These three vehicles are the vehicles you have to choose from. So that's pretty much the setup. Now we're gonna get into the missions for each one of these vehicles for this week. And we have the Gradi Turismo Omagio, which is our highest paying one with a max sell value of $395,000 or a salvage value of $316,000. I started off with this vehicle and the first vehicle you do for the mission is going to be free. You're not gonna have to pay for the setup fee. And you'll see you'll be brought to a little area here where you can see the max sell value and salvage value and it asks you to start this scope out mission. Each mission has a scope out mission that you have to complete before entering the main board. So go ahead and do the scope out mission. Very simple and straightforward. You're going to go to the vantage point and once you've reached the vantage point you're going to have to take some photos. 
One of the photos is going to be of the helicopter on top of the building along with the ventilation unit. Once you've taken both those photos, you're going to want to head around to the back of the building. I went all the way around over this bridge and I took a photo of the back entrance. Very easy. And once you've done that, you're going to have to head on all the way back to your salvage yard. Then you're going to head back to your computer where you'll see the whiteboard and you'll see there's two different categories of missions. In the top right, we have our tasks and we have three tasks that must be completed and then an optional task as well as we have our planning work, which we have two of those. And then we also have an optional planning work. Now, like the other businesses, the optional ones usually aren't worth it. And in this case, in all the other missions, I didn't see any value in completing them as I didn't complete them and I was able to complete the missions just fine without any issues that could have been prevented by completing these tasks. So once you complete the scope out mission, you're going to want to start with your first planning work. Planning work can be started from your computer here at the office in the salvage yard and tasks are actually started out in the free mode area where you'll see a green duffel bag. So we're going to start our first planning work, which is going to be the police maverick. So to get to police maverick planning work complete, you're going to head on over to the weasel new building and then hack the signal box. Once you've completed hacking the signal box, you're going to the Central Los Santos Medical Center as that is where the helicopter is currently located. You're going to want to access the roof either via the ladder or just fly on top of it with whatever vehicle you're using and then steal the police maverick. Once you've obtained the police maverick, lose the cops and then deliver the maverick to the marked location which happened to be the helipad on the far west of the map. Once you've landed the helicopter securely, you're going to want to leave the area and that will complete the Maverick work. From here, I actually ended up completing a task, but for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to do the next planning work. The tactical gear is our next planning work mission that we need to complete. And to complete the tactical gear planning work, we're going to go to Pillbox Hill. And after taking out a few targets, we're going to enter a lockup. In here, you're going to have to go all the way down this flight of stairs and take out several targets. Once you've taken out all the targets, check the trucks for the tactical gear in the back. To check the trucks, you're simply gonna go to the back of the truck, press right on the D-pad, and you will open the truck to see if there's gear in there. You'll eventually find a truck that has gear in it, and once you've done that, you're gonna hop in the truck and drive out. And you simply just have to drive this truck back to your salvage yard. No police or anything will be on you other than the NPCs, but you can completely avoid them as you are in the armored truck. And that will bring us to our tasks. And our first task is going to be the weapon stash. For the weapon stash mission, it's very simple. You're going to enter the ammunition that is located nearby and look for the unmarked weapons. Once you locate the unmarked weapons, you simply collect them by pressing right on the D-pad and then you walk out of the building with them and stash them at the rear of the police station in this dumpster. This is the same location you took the photo earlier for the rear exit photo. You need to stash the weapons in a timely manner as suspicion does rise over time and if you raise suspicion, you're likely to fail the mission or have the police on you. So you're going to want to do this rather quickly. And once you leave the area, the task will be completed. For our second task, we have the getaway vehicle. You're going to have to break into a garage. And once you enter the garage, the NPCs will not be hostile, but I recommend you instantly engage with them after you take cover as they do become hostile after a few seconds. Take out all the enemies and select whichever vehicle you feel is fit for the mission. I went ahead with this vehicle because it looked like it had armor on it and then you're going to pick one of three locations to stash the vehicle for later on in the mission. Once you leave the area, you will have completed this task. And for our third and final task for the gang banger robbery, we are going to complete the stun gun task. For this task, you're simply going to go over to the casino in this case and go to the security vehicle that is located in the parking lot. You simply walk to the back of the vehicle, press right on the D-pad to open the trunk, and then press right on the D-pad again to steal the stun guns. Once you've retrieved the stun guns, you have to take them back to the salvage yard. Very simple mission to complete. And this will bring us to the actual finale of the gangbanger robbery. So once you return to the computer, you'll be able to start this mission up and you'll be asked to go to the Mavericks location, which is in the helipad on the far west of the map where we dropped it off. Here you'll pick up the helicopter and fly it on top of the Mission Row police station. 
Once you arrive there and land, you're going to be asked to throw BZ gas into the ventilation units. You're gonna to have to do this for all four ventilation units. And once all four ventilation units have received the BZ gas, you're going to be put in a cutscene where a police officer walks out of the building. You're gonna walk through that exact door that the police officer walked out of, and you're going to make your way down the staircase to get to the first floor. Here you'll be engaged with enemies. So take your time while making your way through the building. And then the keys for me were in the locker rooms. So you're gonna simply enter the locker room, take out this target and grab the keys. I had to step away from the keys for them to actually let me pick them up. When I was too close, it would not allow me to do so. So once you grab the keys, you're going to have to head your way down to the basement. Here you'll be engaged with more enemies until you get to the office computer. Once you access the cell computer, you're going to have to hack it and completing the hack unlocks the door to the cells. Here you'll be met with King Tiny who you'll have to extract out of the building. You'll be met with a high amount of force and you don't have any weapons so you're likely to die. If you are lucky and do not die, you're going to have to continue your way through the hallway to get to the point where you'll exit near the rear of the building. If you do die, you'll spawn outside at the rear of the building anyways, so no big deal, where you'll be met with more enemies. Take these enemies out and retrieve your weapons that you stashed in the dumpster earlier on. Now you'll be able to take out enemies a lot easier and escort King Tiny out of the area. Be sure to destroy the control panel to open the lock gates so Tiny can follow you so you may exit the area effectively. Then make your way over to your stashed vehicle where Tiny will hop in and you will have to lose the cops. To lose the cops, use the classic spot in the subways nearby and wait for the warrant level to wear off. Once the warrant level wears off, you're going to take him to the LSIA helipads and you'll be put into a cutscene. After this cutscene, he will direct you to infiltrate the Vagos hideout where the vehicle will be stashed. Once you get close enough that the NPCs are in range of your weapon, I recommend you park your car sideways and use it as cover so you guys can take out the NPCs rather easily. Once you've taken out all the NPCs, simply walk to the car in the garage and drive it back to the salvage yard. Once you've arrived at the salvage yard, you'll have completed the gangbanger robbery, and you'll see here you have these micro challenges that can be completed for a bonus reward. Each one of these challenges is going to pay you out $10,000. After you completed the mission, you'll be able to actually go ahead and look at the vehicle. You can either sell the vehicle or salvage parts. This is up to you. Selling the vehicle does have the risk of taking damage during the delivery and will actually decrease the amount of funds and it also takes up your time. But salvaging parts is also an option where you won't risk any losing any money, but it does take up a slot in your auto shop's carlet. For our second mission, we have the Bravado Gauntlet Hellfire and this will cost us $20,000 to set up to steal this vehicle. We have a max sell value of 340,000 and a salvage value of 272,000. So for the Bogdan robbery, we're going to have to scope out Maze Bank Arena. I arrived there with one photo already taken somehow, even though I hadn't taken a photo yet. And then I also took a photo of the front door of the Maze Bank Arena. And that was my second photo. And from there, you're going to have to go into the building and take a picture of this doorway slash sign, sending all three of these photos to Jamal. Once you've taken all three photos, return to your salvage yard. For our first planning work, we'll complete the bypass module. All you have to do is destroy the signal jammers. There's three of them indicated by the red icon. And once you destroyed all three of these, you'll be directed to the Meriwether lockup. And here you have to destroy the control panel. Once you destroy the control panel, you'll be able to take out all the targets in the giant warehouse garage where you'll be able to steal the bypass module. Once you've stolen the bypass module, head back to your salvage yard and that will complete the bypass module planning work. For the VIP pass planning work, we are going to break into a abandoned workshop underneath the maze bank arena. Here you're going to have to search the locked rooms for a key card. There are two locked rooms that I know of. To access these rooms, you have to hack the doors. Once you hack the door, you'll be able to go into the room and search for the key card. I had to do this for two rooms and found the key card in the second room. Once you find the key to Pete's office, you're going to actually find the VIP pass in his office. After obtaining the VIP pass, bring it to the salvage yard. And that will conclude both of the planning work for this dug in robbery. For our tasks, go to LSIA to break into a warehouse to steal the LS panic trailer. I recommend you take out all the security 
and then you'll be able to find the cab keys which were located in the entrance of the building. Once you have the cab keys you'll be able to get inside the trailer and exit the warehouse. From here you're going to have to lose the cops which can be difficult but with some patience you'll be able to lose them and then stash the panic trailer at the marked location. Once you leave the area that task will be completed. For our second task we have the LS panic outfits. For the panic outfit you're going to have to go into the suburban clothing shop and look for a duffel bag once you find this duffel bag pick it up by pressing right on the d-pad and then walk out of the building unfortunately your buddy here did not pay for it in advance so the police will be on you lose the police and once you've done that you're going to go to your salvage yard completing this task Fortunately for the Duggan robbery, there are only two tasks that are mandatory. So that will bring us to the finale of the Duggan robbery. You're going to want to go to the location where you dropped off the truck and pick up the truck where you dropped off the cab and the trailer and drive it to the arena. Once you arrive at the arena, you're going to enter the arena and show the VIP pass to the guard. Well, the guard will escort you to a staircase leading to an elevator that will bring you to a room full of enemies you're gonna have to take these enemies out one by one and then go to the telescope in the room that's indicated by a green icon on the map and you can simply locate the hellfire or whatever target vehicle you're going to have to target once you've located the vehicle you need to use the spectator tablet to use a drone to EMP the vehicle so you can disable the vehicle and acquire the vehicle easily. Once you've EMP the vehicle you need to head down to the arena where you'll have to take out several enemies until you get onto the track and enter the vehicle. At this point you need to install the bypass module and for the bypass module it will take some time and you're going to want to head on your way over to the exit which is indicated by the mechanic icon with the arrows. And once you've exited the arena, you all you have to do is drive back to your salvage yard. Now, in my case, this vehicle was lined with bombs and I had to disable the bombs. You may have to actually drive all the way up north to Howe's workshop area where he'll disable the bombs. But for me, I got to the salvage yard so quickly that it teleported me to Howe's workshop when I entered the salvage yard. From here, I had to simply drive back to the salvage yard. So this was no inconvenience for me but I'm assuming this glitch is gonna be in the game for a while until they patch it. If they don't patch it, you can go back to your salvage yard and then drive back to your salvage yard for a second time. But if they patch it, you're gonna to have to drive all the way north to Howe where he'll disable the bombs and you'll be able to actually drive your Bravado Gauntlet safely into the building. And that will conclude the mission, your micro objectives, where you'll get $10,000 each and $20,000 if you complete all of them, giving me a bonus $50,000. And last but not least, we have the BF Weevil with a max sell value of 260,000 and a salvage value of 208,000. Of course, you're gonna have to complete a scope out and the scope out takes you all the way to the docks. Once you get to the docks, you're gonna have to take a few photos. One of the photos is of the shipping container the cargo container on top of the ship, as well as you're gonna have to take a photo of the shipping manifest. After you've taken a photo of the shipping manifest, that will leave us with the last photo, which is the container locked. Once you have taken all three of these photos and sent them to Jamal, head back to the salvage yard where you'll start up the planning work. For our planning work, we have sabotage and disguise. And for sabotage and disguise, I had to head all the way up to Polito Bay, where I had to break into a LSPA office and then hack the LSPA database. Here you'll be able to use the external device to use brute force to break into their databases. Once you've gotten into the database and wiped out the digital records, you'll be asked to plant some explosives. Once planting all the explosives, find the yellow duffel bag, which has the Coast Guard outfits in it. Once you've retrieved the duffel bag, you're going to exit the office and leave the area. Be prepared to be ambushed by a whole bunch of enemies when you exit the building. And once you've left the area, I recommend you detonate the explosives as soon as possible and head on back to your salvage yard. For our second planning work, we have the Skylift. You need to go to Fort Zancudo and steal the Skylift. Before you can steal the Skylift, you'll have to take out the enemies, including the Meriwether helicopters that are going to attempt to stop you from stealing it. Once you've taken out all the helicopters, you'll be able to get into the Skylift and bring it back 
to the marked location, which happened to be the helipad again on the far west of the map. Once you've landed the skylift securely, you'll be able to leave the area completing the planning work. And that'll bring us to our three tasks we need to complete for this robbery. The first task is going to be to break into a storage facility where we have to steal a boat. Once you enter the storage facility, you're going to have to take out a whole bunch of enemies and then choose which type of boat you want to steal by getting in a pickup truck and attaching one of the trailers to the back of the truck. Once you have the trailer linked, you'll be able to exit the building and deliver the boat to the salvage yard. For our second task, we have to collect the flares. Nearby, we'll be directed to a lifeguard station where you'll have to search the area for some flares. Search the area for a little box that has a whole bunch of flares in it, pick them up and then head back on over to the salvage yard. For our final task, we have to find the bolt cutters to head way north into Mount Chiliad area and search the area at the sawmill. In the area, you'll find the bolt cutters, pick them up and head back onto the salvage yard once again. And this will bring us to the cargo ship robbery finale. It's going to direct you to go to Elysian Island where you'll get on whatever boat you decided to steal. In our case, we have the sea sharks. Take the sea sharks out to sea where you'll eventually start to see a boat climb aboard the boat using the chain by pressing red on the d-pad. Here you'll be put into a little cutscene and be asked to go to the bridge. You can sneak your way to the bridge or you can go guns blazing. I recommend you sneak your way as I didn't and I paid a hefty price. So definitely use a silenced weapon to take out the targets and sneak your way to the bridge. Once you've reached the bridge you're going to want to take out the captain and his bodyguard and then search the captain. Once you search the captain, you'll find the terminal codes where you'll be able to use the terminal in the bridge to download the location of the possible containers that have the target vehicle. From there, you're going to head on over towards the containers and search them for the vehicle. At this point, you're going to have to search up to three containers, which may or may not contain the vehicle. And once you find the container with the vehicle in it, you're going to have to attach a flare to the side of it by pressing right on the D-pad. Once you've done that, the sky lift will actually come in and start to take the vehicle away in the shipping container. You're going to want to hop onto this modified sea sparrow that has missiles on it to follow the skylift and guard it from enemies trying to damage it. Once it's reached its point in the city, you're going to have to land beside it and open the container. Open the container will release the target vehicle where I recommend you drive off the ramp because damage does not matter in this part of the delivery. Now you just have to drive the weevil back to the salvage yard to complete the robbery. Now you have two options for each of these vehicles. You can either salvage them or sell them. Some things to keep in mind is that the salvaging is going to take a long time on these vehicles for some reason and they are going to take up a spot on your lifts in your shop and you only have two lifts in the shop so if you decide to salvage two of these vehicles because you don't want to deliver them you're not going to be able to run your tow truck aspect of the business which we'll get into later on in this video so i do recommend you sell at least two of these vehicles so you can keep your tow truck up and running so for the sell mission it's just like import export you're going to have to deliver it to the docks if you crash and take damage, you will lose some profits from the delivery. This takes about two minutes to do. And unfortunately, in my case, I can't give you the original footage of me selling the vehicle as my capture device decided to crash. But it's very simple. You're just going to simply drive to the docks into the yellow circle. And if you don't crash, you'll get paid the full amount. And if you crash and take damage, well, you'll be deducted. And then of course you have the option to salvage, which I did end up doing for two of these vehicles, which was a huge mistake. I cannot stress this to you enough. Do not salvage more than one of the vehicles that you did for the robberies. Matter of fact, I recommend you always sell. That way you always have both lifts available for your tow truck. But if you do decide to salvage, it's going to take quite a bit of time for that vehicle to be broken down and get the profits from it. So those are the three missions we have this week. We'll be drip fed two more missions in the future and I will most likely do a guide on those so we can complete the mega guide in its entirety. With that being said, we're gonna take a look at the other aspects of the business where we have the tow truck service. Now you can go over to the tow truck that you purchased inside the business and you'll be able to respray it or you can run tow truck service. For these missions, they're very simple. Simple, I'm not going to overcomplicate it. You're going to be asked to go to an area, pick up a vehicle by attaching it to your tow truck simply by reversing into it. And then while you're not moving, you're going to want to press up on your thumbstick, which will raise the vehicle and make it easier to transport. And then simply just drive back to your salvage yard. Once you return to the salvage yard, the vehicle will be put on one of your two car lifts, 
where it will be broken down over time and once all the salvage parts from that have been sold you'll get a lump sum of money which will generally range between 30 to 40 thousand dollars on the higher end which for a simple mission of driving to a location and driving back usually a short distance this is definitely worth your time especially for passive income i do find that these vehicles break down quicker than the actual robbery vehicles maybe because their value is less i could be wrong guys let me know in the comment section below because i did find that my salvaged vehicles from the tow truck broke down a lot quicker than the ones i salvaged from the robberies this could be in my head let me know what your guys' experience is in the comment section you can only have two cars being broken down at a time so once you've collected two vehicles or already have a vehicle from your robbery on there you cannot collect any more the tow truck will not be able to operate this is why i say do not salvage the vehicles that you stole from the robbery get the max profit from them by selling and use the tow truck to fill those two spots on your car lift and lastly when it comes to money making in this business we have the safe that we purchased earlier on and that safe is going to accrue money and the money you get per day in game will increase for every tow truck mission you complete the max that the passive income of the safe can be is $24,000 with the max capacity of the safe being $250,000. These are the three ways you can make money with this business. Hopefully you learned something new in this salvage yard guide. If you liked the video, please do drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. 